All right, so of course the first part of any good gaming setup is the desk. That's kind of the basis of everything that we're gonna do today. So for this, I went with the Flexi Spot 55 inch by 28 inch height adjustable standing and sitting desk. Uh, what you need to know about this desk is that it's electric, which is why there's cables down there that are look like a mess right now. But it ranges from 28 inches high to I think somewhere around 47 inches high. So if you wanted to use this as a standing desk, you'd do that as well. But I'm just gonna be using it as a sitting desk. So it's gonna stay at 28 inches high. I'm not gonna adjust it. So chances are this little controller right here is probably gonna get removed and all those cords down there might be gone as well at some point during this build, but we'll find out eventually. We'll see what I wanna do as the build progresses. So it is a black top with a white frame, which is literally the polar opposite of the last desk that I used for my main setup here, which was a white top black frame. Now, one thing I know a lot of people are not gonna be happy with is the price tag of this desk. This desk costs somewhere around 350 bucks on their website. Uh, I do have a promo code to get 15% off, which takes it down quite a bit. But uh, this desk is pretty expensive for what it is. There are certainly cheaper options out there on the market that you could go for if you don't wanna pay that much money for this desk. Considering I've literally built other gaming setups for the exact price of this desk, it's kinda of up there in the price range. So if I remember, I'll throw a cheaper desk in the description down below, uh, just in case you want something that's a bit cheaper than this as a nice alternative. I'm personally just going with this desk because I had it on hand and I personally am a huge fan of the build quality of this thing. It's got a really nice weight to it. It's not gonna move around on my carpeted floors, which is a problem I've had with a lot of other desks. So yeah, that's the desk we're using for this build. So next up, we're gonna go ahead and install the dual monitor mount arm type deal that bolts onto the desk in the back somewhere around there. I'm gonna measure out 27 and a half inches from the, well, either side, because that'll be the middle of the desk and then we will mount our stand on there, which I'll show you guys now. Yeah, so this is that clamp I was talking about, or the arm rather. Uh, you can see right here, it'll clamp onto the desktop, something like that, and then these two arms come out, which is where the uh, two monitors will hang off this. And you'll see here in a second what this will look like when it's actually on the desk. You can get these on Amazon for about 30 bucks, which is where I got mine at, and I've been super happy with this thing. This is not my first time using it. I've used it before in previous builds, and I've been a Pretty big fan of this thing ever since. I've purchased quite a few of these things that have been a rather massive pain and were broken when they came in the mail, but this one's been pretty good for me ever since I bought it. So I'm pretty happy with this. Again, link in the description down below, just like for everything else in this build. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this on the back of the desk right there, and I will maybe show you guys the process. Maybe not, we'll see if it makes it into the final cut of the video, but let's go ahead and install the dual monitor arm on the back of the desk. All right, so as you can see, I got the monitor arm installed there on the back of the desk. Uh, let's see, we are 27 and a half inches away from the side of the desk there, so we're dead in the center. So that way when the monitors are mounted, it's right in the middle of the desk and it's not offset to one side at all. So that's perfect, it's just how we want that. Also, one thing to mention, uh, if you do end up using one of these things and you don't want to scratch at the top of your desk, I'd recommend using some sort of thick tape or like a foam pad. I'm using electrical tape just because it has a little bit of thickness to it. And I just put a small amount of that underneath this little bracket here. That way it doesn't scratch up this brand new desktop. I don't want to ruin this desk. It is pretty expensive. So that's just a small tip if you guys do end up using one of these little desk mount things. It also works for like microphone boom arms as well, but anything that pretty much clamps onto your desk, it's good to use some sort of protection for that. So. Let's go ahead and move on to the monitors now so we can get those hung on this monitor mount. All right, so here's what we got for the monitors. These are two Asus Tough uh, VG24V is a model number. Uh, what you need to know is these are 1080p curved monitors, one millisecond response time, 144 hertz uh, refresh rates. And uh, that's pretty much all you need to know about these things. I got these at a really good price on Newegg for about uh, somewhere around 175 bucks a piece. Last time I checked, these were out of stock on their website. So if they're still out of stock when I edit this video, then I'll just put something else in the description in place of these, uh, as well as the original link too. So just in case they come back in stock. But uh, yeah, I'm using two of these bad boys right here. I've used these before in a previous build as well. And I'm really happy with these things. They work pretty much perfectly for me. A lot of people will use one good monitor like this 
Uh, they'll just take one 144 hertz monitor with the one millisecond response time, and then they'll also buy a crappy monitor alongside of it because it's usually cheaper. But because these two were so cheap, I just bought two of them instead. Plus, uh, symmetry is pretty important to me in this build, so uh, having the same monitors was kind of crucial to me, otherwise it would just drive me crazy all the time. So, so you can see I've already got the Visa mounts installed on the back of these monitors here, which will hang off the stand right here. So I'll go ahead and show you guys that process here in just a minute. So yeah, let's go ahead and hang these monitors up on the stand here, and then we can get some LEDs installed in the back of those, and then we'll wire everything up and we'll go from there. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so you can see we got the monitors both hung up on the stand there. But if we zoom in a little bit, you can see there's a little bit of a gap between both of these monitors here where there's a little bit of light getting through. Once we put the LED strips on the back of these monitors, that's really gonna show through and it'll bleed through this little gap right here quite a bit. So we wanna try and get rid of that as best as we can before we put those LED strips on there. So we're gonna fix that by taking some black electrical tape here at the back of the monitors, and we're just gonna put one little strip of this down the gap right here between these two monitors. So it should be pretty easy. Just take one little strip here of this tape and uh, put it right there along the entire height of these monitors and then that should get rid of the problem all in all. I had this issue with my last setup that I built. I didn't do this step, and I had a lot of issues with light bleeding through, which is not fun. It makes it look pretty crappy, so we're gonna fix it with this one just by using some black electrical tape. So I'm gonna do that real quick, and then we'll go ahead and install those LED strip lights that I was talking about, and then we will go from there. All right, so I got the electrical tape installed between the two monitors here. Uh, so while the desk is moved away from the wall, I wanna go ahead and take this time to install my LED strip lights between, or rather behind the monitors. That way it gives a nice glow off the back of the wall. So for that, I'm using these Mercury uh, Smart Wi-Fi LED strips. These basically just have the ability to use an app to control the lights, but fortunately you don't have to. Now I've used these lights uh, quite a few times before in the past now, and uh, I haven't been able to get the app actually working with these lights. I've tried multiple times to get it to work, but I just couldn't do it. So normally I just stick to using the physical controller that comes with these lights. You actually have to have this thing plugged into the lights anyways. So I just end up using this instead as a way to cycle through the different colors that they have pre-installed on this little controller box here. In terms of the actual lights themselves, this is just a six and a half foot rope of LED lights. Uh, you do have little sections here on the light strip that you can cut it at if you don't need all six and a half feet. I end up using the entirety of the six and a half feet for my dual monitor setups that I do. Uh, it just seems to work out that way a little bit better. So there's an adhesive backing on this. You just use to stick wherever you want. My experience with all LED strips is that uh, the adhesive backing that they provide with these products is decent for usually about a week or two and then it ends up starting to fall off the back of the monitors here. So what I like to do is just add some clear packing tape on the back. Now you wanna use clear tape because obviously these are lights and you don't want any kind of black tape to cover up those LEDs that are inside of this rope here. So use clear tape and that way it doesn't actually affect the color at all. All right, strips are installed. You can see I kind of went a little bit overboard with the tape here. I got. Uh, some tape every few inches and that's a bit overkill. You don't quite need that much. I just kind of Just wanted to make sure it's gonna stick, you know I can see I've got them fired up here One thing I will mention if you're gonna do dual monitor setups always leave a little gap of some uh, Some slack here in the LED strips between the two monitors That way if you ever have to adjust them or if they end up getting moved then you won't rip the LED strips off of your monitors do that on the top and bottom. Just give it a little bit of room to move around. So yeah, that's kind of what we're working with here with the LED strips. Those are pretty much done. Now when we put the desk back against the wall and turn my studio lights off, it'll look nice and pretty. And uh, yeah, so I'm not gonna demonstrate that just yet. We will demonstrate that a little bit uh, later in the video once we get some more stuff taken care of first. Yeah, so that's enough of the LED strips. Let's go ahead and move on to the mouse keyboard and the mouse mat so let's go ahead and do that so first up is obviously the mouse mat and for this build i'm trying something new this is an led outlined uh, extra large mouse mat this will go underneath the keyboard and the mouse 
And if you take it out of the packaging here, you can see on the outside of it has this clear little strip. That is the LED strip on the outside of this thing. Uh, it does need a USB cord to power it up at the top right here. Now it does come with two USB cables in the package. You have a nice stealthy black one and then this one right here, which if I'm not mistaken, I believe this one lights up. So if you plug this into your PC or into your wall, it'll light up different colors. I would assume blue because the cord is blue, but uh, I'm not going to use this one because we already have enough LEDs for this build as it is. So I'm going to use the nice stealthy black one. We'll just plug the small end into this part right here. There's a little USB port. And then we'll run the cord straight back to the PC, which will be down below. And we'll plug the other end in there. And then whenever the PC is on, this thing will have power and it'll have a nice LED outline, which will look really, really nice with the keyboard and mouse. That'll be sitting on top of this thing, which we're going to go over now. So for my ridiculously overpriced mechanical keyboard, today I'm going with the Logitech G915 TKL. TKL stands for 10 keyless. So there's actually no numpad on the side over here. It's just a smaller keyboard. They do have a regular version as well, but this is a wireless RGB mechanic keyboard from Logitech. Pretty pricey if I do say so myself. Usually I wouldn't pay quite that much for a keyboard, but plan on keeping it for a while. Taking it out of the package here, you got the classic Logitech plastic sleeve covering the keyboard. Go ahead and take that off. All right, so here is the beautiful little keyboard. The letters on the keycaps are kind of hard to see uh, when it's not lit up with the RGBs, which is kind of a bummer, but once it's lit up, it'll be just fine. The face of this keyboard is actually made of aluminum. It's kind of that brush look it has right here. So it does have a nice weight to it and it does feel pretty high quality. If I'm not mistaken, they have three different types of switch types for this keyboard. Uh, they have linear, I believe they have clicky and tactile as well. Uh, don't quote me on that though, this is a linear one. So I do know they have at least a linear switch type, which I'll go ahead and give you guys a quick little sound bite of what this keyboard sounds like up close to my microphone. So I'll do that real quick. And then lastly, we're gonna need a mouse. So for that, I chose the Logitech G502 wireless mouse. Uh, no particular reason I went with this mouse. I just wanted something that was Logitech that also had RGB lighting, was wireless, and uh, looked nice. So I went with this. Basically, I just wanted my mouse to match the keyboard. So I tried my hardest to do that. So this is the mouse right here. So one of the things that I find cool about this mouse is that it has removable weights underneath this thing here. So you just push down and you can pull this thing off and you can add some weight into this if you want. This is also where you can store the uh, USB receiver for this wireless mouse as well. Uh, I guess if nothing else, it does have quite a few different G buttons on here, which are just little programmable buttons on there that you can set up for whatever you want through the Logitech software. So I'll do that eventually, but yeah, that's pretty much it for these things right here. So yeah, real quick, I'm gonna go throw my PC underneath the build and get everything wired up. That way I can set up the LEDs on the mouse mat, the keyboard, and the actual mouse itself. And we can see what all that looks like in just a little bit here. So I'm gonna do that real quick and we'll be right back. All right, so I got the PC installed down there. You guys can see I've got the keyboard and mouse both lit up. I'm doing a pinkish kind of purple scheme with this one and the uh, Mouse mat LEDs are blue. I don't know how well you guys can see that. As well as the strips in the back there are blue as well. So I'm doing like a, a kind of pink and blue scheme right now. I might change it before the video ends, but we'll see how that goes. So next up, before the microphone, we're going to install this. So this is just a little RGB light bar that can sit on your desk. I found this at Walmart while I was there shopping today, so I was like, I'll pick that up. Here it is. This is just the bar itself. You got a little stand for it. And of course, you got an RGB controller. So I'm thinking we're probably going to install it right about here. We're going to install the little desk stand here by screwing it into the lights. You can either install this stand on the bottom like this, 
or you can do it on the side as well. So it depends if you want to go vertical or horizontal with this. But it's basically just going to sit there kind of like that. And then I'll plug it into some USB power and we can uh, make it match the colors of the setup. So I'm going to go plug that in real quick. All right, so that light is installed back there. You guys can kind of see what this looks like now with the lights off. The camera might not pick this up very well, but you can see keyboard and mouse are pink. I got the white WASD keys. Uh, the light bar is installed in the back there, and then you got the blue accent lights for the mouse mat and the LED strips and behind the monitor. So now that that is complete, we're gonna go ahead and install our microphone, and uh, we should be just about done after that. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So for the microphone stand, we're gonna use this Inno Gear microphone boom arm. Got this on Amazon. This is just a standard microphone boom arm. There's nothing too special about it. These boom arms are usually pretty much all the same anyways with very slight differences. Pull it apart like that. All right, so the first part that we have to take care of here is this little clamp section. This is the part that just clamps onto the actual desk itself and then the boom arm will slide into this little hole here. So we're gonna take this and clamp it onto the side of the desk. I'm opting for the left side because that's where my PC is at and it's just more convenient for me considering there's a wall right here and not one on the right side. So. Just gonna slide it on to wherever you want it. And then you'll turn that little screw on the bottom, little. That way when you try and pull it, it doesn't come off, so that way your microphone won't fall off the desk. So now we gotta take the actual boom arm and we'll take the side with the little black tube. We'll just put that into the little hole on the clamp. I have to loosen this a little bit. And then there we go. So before the microphone goes on, we have to install the shock mount plate for the microphone. And you'll see why this looks different than most in just a second here when I show you guys the mic. This has an adapter already installed on it, so this will fit this thread. So pretty much you just take this and you're gonna screw it on. Doesn't get much easier than that. And then for the microphone, I'm using a Blue Yeti Blackout Edition. It's just the all black version of their Blue Yeti microphone. So it's pretty easy. All we gotta do is just take this, like I said, and we're just gonna thread it in. And then there you go. Then obviously we have our USB cable as well that powers the microphone. So this will just plug into the bottom of the mic. And then we can take the cord and we can run it along the boom arm here with some zip ties. And then it'll run it down to the PC for power. And uh, it should be just as easy as that. All right, so as you guys can see, we got the cable zip tied to the stand, a little bit of slack up here at the top so that it, if I do move the boom arm at all and change the position, it won't rip the cable out of the microphone, which is awesome. So we also got a foam windscreen installed on the microphone as well. And you can see the red light is on, meaning the microphone is powered up, which is awesome. So that means that's all working nicely. So the microphone is done. We got the keyboard, mouse, and mouse mat. That's all done. Monitors are done. So I'm hoping that that little LED bar right there doesn't actually affect the wireless receivers of the keyboard and mouse because you guys can see behind there, this cable here and this cable here, those are the two little wireless receivers that run down from the PC up here so that the uh, wireless signal is a bit stronger. Uh, I don't think this will be a problem because there's a gap underneath it, but if it is a problem, I'll end up moving it in my own time, but for right now, I think it's pretty good. In the video, it looks kind of white, but it's actually pink to match the color of the keyboard right now, so. The only thing I'm not happy with on this build is this cable right here for the LED mouse mats. Uh, I might end up using some electrical tape to tape this down in a straight line all the way back because I don't really like the look of how this looks. It kind of just looks like I threw it together last minute, but in reality, I tried taping it down. It just didn't look the greatest but I might take my own time to uh, straighten that out a bit more in the future, so. But all in all, I think the setup is just about done for this video. You can see everything is looking mighty fine. And uh, I'm actually gonna go ahead and turn off my studio lights here. I've got two of them behind me. And then you guys can see what the different RGBs look like behind the setup and all that. So let me do that real quick. All right, so here you guys go. My camera's not the best in low light, so I apologize for that. But you guys kind of get an idea of what we're working with here. See, so we got the LED bar right there that's looking awfully pink to match the Logitech keyboard and the mouse, which are both pink as well, with the white WASD keys. 
and we've got the blue LED strips in the back that are bouncing off the wall looking all cool. The camera makes it look like it's really, really like blindingly bright, but it's not. Uh, you can see we've also got the blue lights on the mouse mat here to match the back of the LED strips. That way it's a nice contrast because you got the three pink things and then you got the two blue lights as well. So it's kind of like a nice cotton candy looking setup today. Of course, I would like to do all blue, but I always do blue, so I don't want to keep boring you guys with the same color over and over again. Even though you could literally just change the colors yourself if you decide to copy me. Just wanted to do something different for this build. So again, as I've mentioned, all of the products you see in this build today will be in the description down below if you want to pick them up for yourself. If you guys have any suggestions or changes that you would make to this build, let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on my builds. And uh, so yeah, that's just about it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next build.